Welcome back, guys. This is session number two related to microservices. So, just we have today this microservice architecture. Today, we will discuss. So, just we need uh, to one suit out round for the last sessions. So, last session we covered about that uh, what is the microservices, what is the monolithic architectures, and where we do where we use. What is the challenges we face? So now one by one we can go. Like first we need what is the microservices? Microservices is a single unit of task. It is the single unit of task, right? It is the single responsibility task. You can call the microservices. Microservices like having a, a single responsibility. Okay, is easy to deploy in the uh, server and it's executable is separate like easy to execute okay so what is that microservices is completed and uh, <clears throat> next is okay so next we completed about that uh, mm -hmm. Uh, monolithics and what is that advantage what is that advantage of while using microservices microservices using what is easy to maintain deployable is easy to deploying okay uh, okay uh, easy to maintain okay and when we you uh, if any server is failing it will not affected to another microservices okay if any microservices are failing it will not affect to another microservices. This is the main advantage. Okay, we can by using microservices we can achieve a loosely coupled. Okay, that's why microservices is not depending to one microservices to another microservices. When the one microservices is depending to another microservices, they are failing to the microservices architecture rule. So not required. So that's why we are achieving that loosely coupling. The main focusing while using loosely coupled. We can deploy independently microservices. Okay. So that point. And where we use microservices when we have a complex uh, system, when we design a complex system, then we can should use microservices. Right. Right. This is the last class system. So now today's session is microservices architectures. So first I will discuss a theory, then I will design a one uh, diagram for that. So there you can also understand one more time. So that is standard architecture of microservice development, uh, deployment customer microservice project. So this also I think you have shown in the last video. So just so first one is the uh, Microsoft service registry, admin server, Zipkin, backend API, what is that? API gateway, what is that? Fin client. One by one, we will go and at the end of this series, I will show the talkers. Okay. Up to this Redis, we can, today we can learn. So now first go to the registry server. So registry server is used to maintain a list of available available in the project like list of services how many services are available in that project that the registry server can maintain okay i will show how to maintain that registry server and registry server also called that eureka server eureka server also some people are calling eureka server but this mainly called the regist service registry. So it provides the information about the registered service like services like name of the service, okay, URL of the service and status of the service. Like these three things it will provide registry server in the registry console. Like it is the service is up or down. Okay. URL of the service or name of the service. Okay. It will number of instances available for the each microservices. And it will provide the number of instances. What is that number of instances? Means this 
particular microservices, how much instance is executing, like two instance, one instance, three instance are executing, it will show like that. Okay. So here we can we can use Eureka server as a service registry. Okay. Which server we use? Eureka server as a service registry we can use like that. So same thing, Eureka server provide the Spring Cloud Netflix library. By using this library, Netflix library, by using Netflix library, we can use that uh, service registry. Okay, up to this is complete, guys. Got it. What is the service registry? List of services it will be showing. And it will show in the name of the service, status of the service, URL of the service, instance of the service. Okay. And it's also showing that the Eureka server simple. I will show these four points. I will show. And what is that admin server? This is the important one. Suppose we have a 10 number of microservices. We have 10 number of microservices. One, two, up to five we can take. Okay. Five number of microservices we have. Okay. So we can go and separately design an actuator for this microservice, design actuator for this microservice. What is that actuator? Actuator is monitoring, like monitoring that application. Okay. Like health. What is that health of your application? Health is down, up, like, okay. And uh, admin server also. Oh, sorry. This one also with this one also. So reduce these things. Like go and separate, separate, go and configure separate, separate microservices with that actuator. We need to use admin server and that admin server just use the configuration as the enable admin server. Then automatically it will uh, monitor all the microservices which are available for that particular project, particular admin server. So this is the meaning of, this is the use of admin servers. So actuator are used to monitor and manage that our application. What is the use of actuators? Monitor and manage that. Monitor and managing all API separately, it's a challenging task, right? This Managing this service, this service, this service is a challenging task. So admin server provides the user interface to monitor all, manage all the API one place using actuators and points. Okay. In the one uh, in the one console, it will take all the endpoints. So what is that admin server? Tell me. It is manning all the actuator endpoint in the one console. All the endpoints in the one console window. Okay, it provides the one interface to monitor all the APIs at one place. Actuator endpoint. How many actuators endpoint? I will show you practically. Okay, that. Now next is Zipkin server. Zipkin server. It's the distributed tracing. Like distributed tracing means it's monitoring that application. It is used to distribute the tracing. Okay, using Zipkin server, we can monitor which API is taking more time to process the request. Okay, main use of this Zipkin server, it is just a jar file, just use the jar file and run the jar file. Okay, configure Zipkin in your project, add the dependency. I will show you the practicals, don't worry. So theory point of view, you can understand. Zipkin servers, so taking more time to process the request. Okay, how much time it will take? And also it will show that, uh, what is that? Zipkin, we can understand how many APIs involved in the request processing. Lot more things are there. Okay, what is the pack and APIs which you have developed? That's it. How many API you need to develop, you can develop. Backend API contain a business logic. Okay, backend API also called the REST API services or microservices. Like we have a payment, uh, card API, flight, not portal, like that. We can, uh, backend API can register as a client. Important. What is that? Backend API register as a client with for anything like service registry, admin server, 
zip kin server you can use along like if you want to use any admin server with your api you can use it if you use registry server you can use it if you use zipkin server you can use it no one can stop you this is totally optional if you don't want to use any one of these don't use i will show these things also so now we completed four things what is the registry servers and actuators, what is the Jeep, uh, admin servers, the Jipkin servers, okay, backend APIs. Now, next is Pink Client. What is the Pink Client? When we have it's providing by the library, if, when we communicate with uh, intercommunication by using microservices, so we use Pink Client. It's providing uh, Spring Cloud libraries, it is to inter service communication. Suppose this is the one microservices, this is microservice 2, M1 and M2. I need to communicate with you by using Fin Client. We have for more, more to more Fin Client, Web Client, Web Client and uh, REST template also. REST template also. But we have a Fin Client is very good because it's having the load balancer by default okay that's why we use this thing client okay so inter service communication means one api is accessing another api using service registry right here using web client rest template we need to pass the external url but in the thing client not required to pass that uh, url inside that okay just it will take from Based on your request, it will take from the service registry. That's it. External communication means accessing third party API, right? Okay, we can, when we are using Fink Client, we no need to main, mention URL of that API to that access using service name. Fink Client will get the service URL from that service registry. Fink Client use Robin and to perform Riven to perform the client side load balancing. Riven, Riven to perform client side load balancing. So now, up to it's completed, Fink client is for why, why we use Fink client. Because it is taking a uh, by default load balancing and it will take a service name from the, the service registry not required to pass the external name of that service, url of the service and it is following robin ribbon ribbon to perform client side load balancing so completed so what is that api get important api got we used to manage our project in backend api so yes api acts as the mediator between user request and backend apis what is that user request and suppose this is the user this is your api user api this is the gateway gateway user give the request to gateway gateway decide this is the go or not go if it's not not <clears throat> proper uh, aligned with that uh, uh, what is that service then it will back to that user okay so this is the api gateway api gateway at the entry point for the all backend apis okay so api gateway will be two types first is the request filter now first is with request filter if it request is good then request router forward the request to particular backend Based URL pattern. Suppose we need a one Vivek API, Vivek API, name API, says API. So it will request to this API, this API, that API, like that. So now what is that API gateway? API gateway is the mediator between user and REST API, right? REST API. It is the entry point of any of any REST API applications. So it is having two type of logic to filter. First is the request filter. Second is the request drop. If request is uh, valid, then request go. Otherwise, non go. Mother, this the the API gateway will not send the request to further request router. And forward the request particular. So now next is very very important config server. 
So what is that a config server, guys? So this is the option we need to. All these points architecture I have shown you, this is optional, not required, okay? Optional. So config server is part of a Spring Cloud library itself. The cloud is providing. Config server is used to externalize config properties. Important. Externalize config property of applications. What is that? In your application, we have application dot properties, right? Application dot properties we have. So by using config server, we can separate that application properties with your application. Application. This is application with having properties file. By using config server, you can copy this, cut this properties file and put inside the config server. Then they can access at that time of run. Okay. This means externalize the config properties. All these properties is a lines. It will take from outside of that. A Spring Boot application. In the real time, we will keep that config server properties of the project to simplify that application maintenance, right? So this is one use. Okay, I will use that config server in real time. Also, that's why I, I said to you, know, I will take a 10 sessions. Okay, Apache Kafka. What is that Apache Kafka? Is the message broker. Send one message to another one. Send one message, one send the message one microservice to another microservice then we use Apache Kafka. Using Kafka we can develop event driven microservice based application. Okay. The message from the app to another app we will use the Kafka as a mediator. Redis cache. This is the important. In our application we have two type of tables. First is the transaction table. First is the non-transaction mean. Non-transaction means just we need to retrieve the data from the table. So this that meaning this is the non-transaction one. So the transaction means insert, update, and delete. So transaction we can not perform that radish, but non-transaction operation we can use that radish. Okay, radish cache means store the data in the cache. Like this is the cache we have. This is the cache. We get the data from that database. Okay, first we store the data inside this. Okay. And again, some other user send request to that particular API, get API, then it will search from that cache. If we data is there, then data will go to the show to the user, return back to the user. It will not go to inside the database to get the data. If data is cache inside the cache, data is not there, then it will go to the database, then come and store the inside the cache. Okay, sometimes you can invalidate cache also. Okay, so this is the meaning of cache to reduce the number of round trip between the Java application to data. So, that is is distributed cache implementation. So, now to this is completed, guys. Right, so theory part is totally finished. So, no need to take care about the theory, just forget it. Okay. All these things I will show you in the practical. So service registry, register all the microservices in the service registry and service registry provide a name of the uh, microservices, uh, instance of that microservices, how many instances are running, uh, URL of the microservices and the status of the microservices. Admin server. Admin server is having that, but that. Uh, okay, admin server. Uh, what is that? Admin, okay, <laughs> admin server having the actuators. Okay, this time I'm just confusing a little bit. It's okay. Admin server having the actuator in the different, different microservices. We cannot implement the actuator in the different, different microservices. So, we need admin server. That admin server will register that microservices in the particular console that will provide that each my each microservices actuator and a point in that console you can access easily. Jipkin server is the tracing your application. Tracing your application how many how much time it will take to process that request. Okay. 
and also involves the requesters how many things are there. And backend API it means your API API gateway is the entry point of the temporary application for that aspect. It is the mediator between the rest APIs. And think client, it is the intra communication between two microservices. Right. Config server, it is the externalize your properties file from your application. Passive Kafka, it is the message broker to send the masses to one microservices to another microservices by using a batch of data we can develop the what is that event driven microservice architecture like event driven microservice that is can say it is storing the data the partially so we can reduce the number of trip between java application to data and docker we will learn after that completion of microservices so this is complete so now i just want to show something to you so here i will be spent okay so now suppose uh, so this is our what is that guys so now here Okay. App one and app two. Okay. This is microservices one, this is microservice two. Right. Or oh, this is our registry. What is that? Tell me, guys. No, 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 no. This is tell me. This is service. So we need to some small size. No, maybe. Okay. This registry. This is our service registry. Right? Service registry we have. So we need a. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, Mm -hmm. We need uh, admin server. Server. Admin server. Okay. We need admin server. After that, we need one thing. Mm -hmm. What is that? Chipkin. Uh, Chipkin. Server. Jipkin. Jipkin server. It's okay. So now we have uh, three things. What we have? Uh, registry. I have this. Uh, what is it? <laughs> uh, so uh, registry service we, we completed. You know that. What is the registry service? Admin server we know. Do. We know. You know that. So registry server. Just I need to one more time. I am just planning. Registry server. It is taking care of, uh, I think, so registry servers take care of this. Mm -hmm. Try magic. magic point. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, uh, service registry, service registry take care about these applications like name of this application when you register okay when you register this application it will take care it will register here inside this service registry right inside the service registry it will register all the servers okay and you can see that this is the service registry here you can see the name of that application which name of this microservices and it is url of this microservices and instance of this microservices how much how many instances running for this microservices and uh, the status of this microservices up or down okay you can see inside the service registry in the admin server it's a depending on the actuators okay actuators like here we not need 
to uh, configure actuator for the each microservices for going just configure one here admin server and then they will uh, automatically register with that okay and jipkin server it's a distributed tracing it will take care about all this uh, distribution distribution and it how much request how much time it will taking to process that request so now up to this is completed now two more things are remaining this is config server this is uh, kafka this is another thing and suppose uh, okay this is what is that i will take this is the third party api okay third third party okay p api right third party api so now here this is uh nothing but what is that mm -hmm. Apache Kafka. Kafka, you can see here like config server. Server. And uh, here we have Apache Kafka config servers we complete. And one more thing is remaining mm -hmm. Redis cache, right? Redis cache. cache. I will implement these four things. So now I just register with this. Okay. And register with. Yeah. <laughs> the point should be up. Okay. Here, register these up microservices with the registry server and register this with this microservices and register with this, uh, this Jpkin servers. Okay. And this is third party communication with it, third party API by using this and intercommunication by using. What is that? Sync client. Sync client. Wait. Sync client. So now, this is our total architecture of the up to this. We have how many things? For one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Up to the nine, we completed the uh, year. If you can see nine, up to this nine, we completed guys. Okay, just I'm taking a screenshot of this and put it inside that. If it is possible, okay, where we need to copy, copy. I think it's not working. Okay, I need to open this my hero software. Okay, perfect. Now minimize this, open this, and I will proceed. No, not I to see. Okay, copy this. Copy this. Perfect. So now up to this is completed, I think you guys. So that's why I, I have told you first the uh, report. After that, I am explaining this diagram. Then you can understand easily. So next video is going to totally practical. Then I will develop these things. First, registry server I will configure, admin server, Jipkin server, and 
and app one I will develop. Okay, after that I will communicating all this thing. Okay, so thank you. We will meet next sessions, guys.